we have symmetry. So the question is whether or not it is going to be symmetric with respect to a hypersurface. So assuming ordered mean curvature, whether or not we have symmetry about a plane. So if this is true, then this would imply the, uh, this would deduce, give the AD Alexandrov theorem, uh, uh, will imply that. Well, so I couldn't quite prove that. So I proved that if this mean curvature, which is defined on the surface M, can have a monotone extension into the whole space, then th this monotone function is Lipschitz. So in that case, I prove that it is symmetric about a hyperplane. But certainly this is very restrictive. Okay. The question is whether or not one can improve, uh, remove the assumption that H can be extended to be a monotone Lipschitz function. Well, this is an example uh, in, 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 a, in, in a paper with uh, Louis Nuremberg. And uh, so it is uh, like this. So if we draw a picture like that, this is symmetric, this is symmetric and straight down and symmetric here, symmetric here. Then this will actually fit the assumption but it's not symmetric. Uh, so, but the fact is this configuration, it can be extended as a monotone function in R2. And this function is C alpha for any alpha less than one, but it's not Lipschitz. So Nuremberg, and I uh, introduced in the you know, paper, which I will describe uh, uh, there. So we introduce a condition, we call it condition S. So namely, so this is a specific direction, a vertical direction. So there are points here, which are very special. So those points where the normal is, horizontal. So those are very special points, okay? So we assume this condition S says that if you take a surface, take this point, the tangent plane going through, it should keep the surface on one side. We, we, this one is violated. So M stays on one side of any hyperplane parallel to the x m plus one axis that is tangent to f. So we made a conjecture uh, there and uh, the, the paper is like 2006. So symmetry holds under additional assumption condition S. So we proved Nuremberg and I proved this conjecture holds for n equal to one. So then this is curves in R2. This proof is relying on ODE argument. We have tried to come up with different proof so that it can extend to higher dimension. So this one is ODE. So then, in the second paper we wrote, so, <clears throat> so we, we introduced, uh, we look at a situation that wh wh whenever in, 
if this is m, whenever we are, this is x m plus one, whenever in such special point where tangent is horizontal, so we assume there the touching order is finite. So by touching order, meaning that this angle. So this angle, the angle here. So whenever you have tangent plane, there's an angle here. Is it, for example, any analytic surface will satisfy this. So, so this is a, we call it condition T. So, so uh, well, actually, uh, when I state here, I, I should actually still add some, some convexity of M near touching point, near such point. For, yeah. so, there, there's a one more hypothesis. So for instance, if it's convex, then if you add this finite touching order, then it's okay. So then we proved it. So, so the way we prove is uh, by, well, maybe uh, let me first say before entering this proof, I will first describe some recent, uh, more recent development is here. So here is a more recent development. So, so this is a joint work with Xu Kai Yan and Yao Yao. So we solved the conjecture Nuremberg and I posed for the mean curvature. So it says that our condition S. So, so whenever we have a surface, if we have a surface at the touching point, so we have a special direction, xn plus one direction. So whenever there's a hyperplane, which is touching the surface M, then this surface is on one side of the touching plane, uh, tangent plane. So of course, we always assume that ordered mean curvature assumption. That's the main assumption. The main assumption is whenever you take, we take two points, B and A, the segment is in the same direction of X and plus Y axis, the mean curvature has an order. So this is the, always the mean, the assumption we assume. So, so, well, our conjecture is under condition S. Actually, so in this work, we solve the conjecture and in fact, under a slightly weaker assumption. The assumption is instead of putting a plane at a touching point, it is allowed to put a cylinder. So, the, so for example, if this is the surface, so maybe I'll draw a picture. So, so suppose if we have a surface like this, so then this is M, this is M, and we find a special direction so we assume this uh, ordered mean curvature with respect to this direction. So then we take a point like this. This is a special point. The normal is horizontal. So condition S prime says we are able to put a cylinder here so that this M is outside the cylinder. So on one side of the cylinder. So instead of a hyperplane. So for example, here is allowed. So this picture satisfy condition S prime, but doesn't satisfy S condition S. So, so therefore we solved the conjecture and actually under a slightly weaker condition. And uh, <clears throat> so the point is, the two methods 
used are different. So one is the method Nuremberg and I used uh, along the line uh, uh, of this uh, uh, moving plane. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and therefore it works not only for the mean curvature, it works for the uh, case elementary M elementary symmetric curvature, for example, and actually works for many other more general curvature. But our results uh, are, we, we didn't solve the conjecture. We, you know, so, so one open problem will be to use, to, to, to establish some variance of, hub, of the hubs lemma, which Nuremberg and I believed should be true. And if completing that, that will make such results uh, work for general coverage. And this result relies on variational characterization of the mean curvature and is proved by a variational method. And here, with this approach, there's also open problem for sigma m curvature. So if we take sigma m as elementary symmetric, the m's elementary symmetric function, which is So this is the elementary symmetric function. If we take m equal to one, this is the mean curvature. Sorry, there are some noise. I'm mowing the lawn. Ah. Yeah, I can't. I can't even open my window. So, okay. So, sorry about the noise. <coughs> okay. So, for then uh, this theorem use variational characterization of this mean curvature. Uh, proved by this, but analogous theorem re result, uh, analog analogous question can be made for sigma M curvature, which also has variational characterization, but we do not know yet how to prove, extend this result to sigma M curvature for M greater or equal than two. So there are two, lines of open problems, uh, which I, I find it uh, quite interesting. And, 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 and reasonable to expect uh, good progress, you know, by, 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 by other, uh, um, people and researchers and so on. Okay, so I will describe, so I will mainly describe this uh, open problems, uh, you know, yeah. So, so, so let's now with the first approach. So A.D. Alexandrov have that theorem and this is the proof he gave. So this is now nowadays, uh, uh, well-known uh, method of moving plane, yeah. 
So let's take this special direction. So M is a mean curvature constant. We take a hyperplane touching, we move from the top and drop down and touch it here. So then as one can see from this picture, when, when we move a little bit down parallelly, so the re reflection will be, the reflection is here, so it's inside. So then we keep a property that the reflection, this is the reflection inside, okay? And also at this point, the normal is pointing down. We keep this property and move lambda down, and unless this property is violated, that place, you call it lambda bar, and uh, lambda bar is somewhere here. So then uh, Alexander proved that that's the symmetry plane. So when at lambda bar, what can happen? Well, one cannot move further, okay? One cannot move further, so it's possible one got stuck here from the inside. So this is case one. Case two is case one does not have occur, never got stuck in the middle, but on the boundary, so this is, it become tangential. So it's not clear, it, 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 it's not going to be possible to mo keep moving. So that's supposed to be the symmetric plane. And, the proof is like this. In case one, in case one, in case one, two surfaces got stuck. One surface is here, has mean curvature equal to the mean curvature of the second surface. So then the difference of the mean curvature will be zero. So therefore, there's an elliptic, this mean curvature operator is elliptic. So ellipticity is used, then it's L U minus B. Then we have strong maximum principle. It's a second order linear elliptic equation. So strong maximum principle will tell us that U minus V should be the same nearby, meaning the surface has to stick together. So then you keep using the this argument, so the reflected surface has to be sticking to the surface uh, below. So that, then this finishes the proof of the symmetry. So then, well, well, for the strong maximum principle, we don't. We, we don't need an equality. What we need is an inequality. And that inequality is given exactly by the ordered mean curvature assumption. So therefore, if case one occurs, we obtain the symmetry uh, as before. No, no work is needed. So the case two is the case one needs to rule out, namely, this, we should say this should not happen. So when the mean curvature are constant, so case two, we have a equation as well. Here, we look at this way, we look at this surface, we, we go to this tangent plane to view this surface from this direction, so we, we still have two surfaces, one and two, one above the other. And uh, the graph of the function, this function is equal to zero at the origin and the derivative is equal to zero, okay? And U minus V is positive because the first case doesn't occur. So, so then this U minus V positive plus equal to zero at the origin fits exactly, this is exactly the setup of the Hopf lemma and the Hopf lemma tells us that the derivative cannot be zero. The derivative is supposed to be positive. So this says that case two doesn't occur. So this is the case, it makes a big difference if we only have a monotone curvature. 
instead of constant curvature. So because the condition tells is this direct, this curvature is less or equal than the curvature down here because B is here, A is here. So here, the mean curvature is HB, so less or equal to H of A. And if you, we look at it from the tangent plane, we are comparing function U at a point, this mean curvature with respect to function V, the mean curvature at a different point. So that's a different, so if one can establish a variant of the half lemma under such condition, then the, the theorem will be proved. So, so this is what, 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 what we just said. So in our situation, namely, when the assumption is an ordered mean curvature, case one still leads to the desired symmetry with no work. Need to rule out case two. So the case two, the picture we look at, so here is a min a n equal to one picture. So we have a we have a so we we put this curvature rotated, so become that that curvature. So therefore that that picture. So therefore we have a function u here. This is a function u. This is a function v, and we are defined on the on t bigger than zero side. So then u is positive and actually we have another assumption we know that u prime is positive because this u prime comes from moving plane earlier and uh, the earlier moving plane arguments so the, the, that part always carries up the derivative positive so we actually have this this condition and u bigger than v and we have this condition. And the main monotonicity condition of curvature translates to this. So if this is T and S, when the value are the same, okay, then the mean curvature, the curvature at one point is less than the other. And this version, you have, we have to prove is impossible. So indeed, this one was proved by Nuremberg and I, in that paper in 2006, and therefore we proved the conjecture for the in dimension uh, uh, for curves in R2, because we, we know we proved this. So, and this condition is needed in establishing this variant of the half step. So if we don't assume this condition, and it's wrong. So there are kind of examples. So, so the main question along this approach, and also it's an interesting question by itself, is to establish variants of half lemma for in, in this such a variant of half flamma in higher dimensions. So when we ask questions about variance of half lemma in higher dimensions, we are not restricted to the mean curvature operator. So, so we expect uh, for good operators here, uh, such results should hold. For instance, one can look at this problem by looking at a Laplace operator, okay? We, we can, in high dimension, we, we can say Laplace is U and that's a Laplace of V at the corresponding point. So that should be uh, analytically easier uh, to start with. And Nuremberg and I had uh, some partial results here also, and these are uh, there are quite many open problems around there. So, so this conjecture of one, yeah, this was proved by established variance of the Hubble lemma. 
So the geometric problem for the geometric problem Nuremberg and I uh, proved, we didn't, we, we have some finite order touching hypothesis, but even under that hypothesis, we did not establish the corresponding half lemma variance. So what we did is we did, we made use of some global information and to rule out that case too. So, so the open problem here is a variant of the half lemma for n greater or equal to two. So, and in, in the paper with Nuremberg, so we made, so we, a geometric problem and the half lemma one and two, and two paper. And we have made a number of conjectures and we have also raised a number of open problems. So, so now this is what some, this is some recent development as I mentioned earlier. So, so we we recently solved this the conjecture Nuremberg and I raised, and actually under a slightly weaker assumption, condition S prime. On the other hand, this the result here. We do not know. We haven't proved uh, uh, it works for sigma m curvature. It's very nitro uh, to expect it's true. And we do not know this, even assuming m is convex. Yeah. To look at a convex surface, assuming sigma m curvature is ordered in one direction, we do not know how to prove the symmetry in that direction. So here I describe this uh, describe this uh, approach, variational approach. So so the again, so let's uh, let's say the state the result first. So the result is like this. We have a surface MN. It's a hypersurface compact embedded in Rn plus one. And this surface has a property that whenever B and A, we, we, we first fix a direction, okay. Whenever B and A are two points in the same direction and the segment lying inside M, then we assume the mean curvature has an order. So that's the main assumption. So, under this assumption only, the symmetry does not hold because there are counterexamples as mentioned earlier. And it doesn't hold even for curves in R2. So, so this theorem, the recent theorem is under an additional assumption. We call it condition S prime. It says that whenever there's a point where the hyper, where the tangent plane is parallel to the special direction xn plus one, one can put a cylinder so that the surface is on one side of the cylinder. Then of course it has, we are talking about outside the cylinder. So this is a weaker assumption than condition as S, which requires it should be outside the hyperplane. Okay, so then we prove the symmetry. 
with respect to a hyperplane perpendicular to the special direction. So here we make use of the following variational uh, structure property for the mean curvature. So it's a well-known property that when we, when we take a closed hypersurface in Euclidean space, if this V, we take any smooth vector field in the Euclidean space, so every point there's a direction V, then we move our surface in the V direction, every point we move by, by a T, make a variation, and ST is the surface area of the surface MT, then the derivative at zero, t equal to zero of the area is equal to, here is the mean curvature, here is a normal direction. So here is the vector field when we make the variation. So that's a, that's the, that's, that's a fact. Yeah, it's a well-known fact. So this is a variational characterization of the mean curvature. So we, we, our proof heavily relies on that. So, so this is a special direction. This is a special direction. Then this is the surface M. So we draw surface M like this. So then we have a pi. We have a pi. It's the projection in this direction, pi. So when you, we project it down, there's a region. This is a pi. The project this M. We call it R. Okay, so we have M. So then this condition S prime assures that the following property. So, so it assures that whenever it's horizontal, the normal, uh, if normally if, if the projected point is on the boundary of R. And also the boundary of R is actually C11. So it has good regularity. And the M itself has two pieces. One is the graph of a function F1, and the other is the graph of a function F2 and plus the vertical part because it is portable, the function is like this. So then this part, we call it the vertical part. So we have this structure given by condition S prime, but F1, F2 certainly will not be continuous in general. So first using this variational characterization, one can prove that actually not only the mean curvature is ordered, it's actually equal for such points. So this can be, can follow easily from this variational characterization. So we have equality instead of inequality for the mean curvature on a line parallel to the xn plus one special direction. <clears throat> so once we know that, we can make first variation for up for vector fields. Okay, this vector fields depends only on x prime. So namely, this vector field is the same on this vertical lines. So special vector fields for any smooth vector fields, the first variation will be zero. It follows simply from the uh, mean curvature being the same on lines parallel to the special direction xn plus one for any smooth vector field. So the proof of our, our theorem is to say that if it, there's no symmetry, then it's the same as saying the gradient of F1 plus F2 
is not identically equal to zero. And in that case, we can produce a special Vx prime to make the first variation non-zero. So that's the proof. So the question is, how should one find this Vx prime? Well, so one can, for this, for any V here, for any V here, this is the expression of S of T area. And this is the vertical part. When you move your first variation vertically, this area doesn't change. So only this part changes. So a calculation says that this is the formula. Okay, this is the formula. It's actually equal to that. So therefore, this A is strictly convex. So therefore, this formula tells us that if this gradient V happens, if this gradient V equal to gradient F1 plus F2, if this is smooth, then it follows immediately uh, from, it follows immediately from that formula because then the strict convexity of this area of functional A will say that this, this will be positive. So however, this is not smooth, this is not smooth. So the main work is that to make a cutoff of this so that it doesn't perturb the positivity and produce a V, we cut off this so that this, the resulting vector field is smooth and is actually compactly supported in R there, uh, in, in, in R and that, but the cutoff part does not be, does not perturb this gain. So for that part, this condition S prime plays essential role. So when you do a cutoff, so this condition, your surface, our surface should be on one side of cylinder. This condition allows this cutoff not disturbing this, the positivity one gained from inside by the uh, strict convexity of the area function. So the open problem is, is for the M. So this, this one still have variation, no characterization, this, this, this HM, sigma M, HM, curvature integral, when you take this first variation, it's equal to HM. So M equal to one, this is one. So this is sigma one. So, so okay. So uh, I, so I, I mainly uh, uh, describe uh, these open problems in this area. Uh, actually, there are there's one conjecture is under condition S, and and uh, then the same result under condition S and ordered curvature. The symmetry should hold for sigma m curvature for m greater or equal than two. For m equal to one, this, this is known. And uh, so this conjecture, there are two possible approaches. One is to use the variational characterization of sigma one, sigma m, and uh, to approach it. So another possibility is to try to study this variance of Hopf lemma, which itself are of interest and uh, to go that way, to begin like in Alexandrov's proof by the method of moving plane. So that has a, that would, if that approach works, it, it would work not only for sigma m, it would work for appropriate uh, 
for, for more general uh, curvature, ellip elliptic curvature functions. So for, for those, there's no variational uh, structure. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor. Uh, any questions? Yeah, Jan. Uh, can I? Can I? Yeah. Just I was just curious on the side of the conjectures you made on the hop flame. Uh, has there been any developments any ever since, or? Uh, uh, not not really, and and uh, for example, not not really. So I think the last work was one uh, with Nuremberg. So we wrote so, uh, so let me okay so so there's okay maybe they, they, I will just uh, write the title the title called partial results on extending the up lemon. And let me see uh, the year. Nine. So, so this paper, uh, the other earlier paper are, uh, are called the a geometric problem and the half lemma. So the earlier work of ours are called a geometric problem and, and half lemma. So one and two. So they are both in 2006. So here, what was here we looked at is the question is we can just set it up as this. So I will draw it like this. So this is uh, Y and this is T. So I should put Y more, and this is T. Uh, this is T. This is T and this is Y. So we look at the region T positive on this side. So one, the main, the main assumption will be on this side is the, is for, we, we freight it like this, whenever, u t y so is equal to v s y there are two functions so u is greater or equal to v so so whenever we have this t is less than s less than one bigger than one and y less than one so y is here so the condition is laplacian u t of y equal less or equal to Laplacian V S of Y. Y keep the same, but S is here, different point. So, and so we, we, we look at Laplacian instead of the mean curvature operator. So, and we started by looking at here, the tangent is finite order, somehow finite order touching. So because, uh, when we prove this half lemma, uh, when we prove this geometric problem, we settled it when the touching order is finite. Whenever touching order is finite, it's easier to handle. So we start from touching order, from touching order, K, for touching order K equal to two is okay. So K equal to three, we didn't even succeed. So we still carried some extra assumption here. But yeah, 
So we wrote for mainly examined the that paper mainly only examined k equal to three. Yeah. And it and for, in that case, it's still a partial result. So so in a way that in this in this uh, uh, in this in this second paper where we handled the situation when uh, the touching order is finite, we actually did not establish a local result half lemma variant for touching order finite, even for k touching order equal to three. So we we use some we made use of global uh, information to pass through a step. But that step in that paper is only half page. So that step was passed that way. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you. So it's largely open. This, this question is largely open. There has not been uh, following up since then. More questions? Any more questions? No questions. Thank you very much, Professor Yemi.